here live on YouTube, on Facebook, and on KUM TV8. I'm Jason Salas, and this is The Hot Spot. And folks, we've been telling you about this amazing exhibit over the Tuman Sands Plaza, Remember Saigon from Vietnam to Guam, really shedding light uh, on the connection between Saigon uh, and our island and, and the historical connection, the cultural connection. Uh, my guest right now, and you can see like right there uh, some of the images as we go to this next interview, but my guest right now, a very good friend of mine, fellow Sanchez Shark, Max Ronquillo, who I have not seen in person in quite a while. Two and, years. Uh, <laughs> yeah, two years. And Max, I know we've interviewed you, um, I've interviewed you um, many, many times over the years. You've always worn various uniforms for yeah. your work uh, with the U.S. military, with your work with the Guam Territorial Band. You have a very distinct manner of dress now, my friend. So this is courtesy of uh, uh, Miko from Shangri-La Mall in Manila. Mm. So this is a uh, traditional Vietnamese ao yai for men. Yeah, so the women have a nice, more elaborate, sexy one <laughs> that mm. goes. Um, so this, this is what uh, men would wear, and maybe also if they were to do a marriage or that type of thing, they'd probably have matching or alternating colors. So, so this yeah. is considered like like absolutely formal wear, like you would wear to like something to the degree or of like cultural, a wedding. Or yes, yeah. or cultural, yes. Cult okay. Probably I would say cultural rather than formal because they'll use it probably even daily. Okay. Yeah. I got to say, even though like it's, you know, I mean, obviously you've got the, um, uh, you've got the collar that, that closes all the way and it goes like all the way down to your wrist. It looks very comfortable and it looks like it breathes it's incredibly well. very comfortable. <laughs> this is great thing to wear given the day. fact that it's pretty hot outside and you just got to yes. our Harmon studios and, and it's black and everything you look thank cool you. as a cucumber right <laughs> thank now. you okay thank you but more importantly is uh, is the rich amazing culture of, of Vietnam and our own culture here uh, the connection and, and the you know shared heritage and the history that we both have and this uh, exhibit over the two months Sands Plaza that I was saying is a wonderful illustration of that yes so 2016 we, we did Miss Saigon at Southern High School and uh, I, I was pulled away from military duty, so I didn't get to do it. I really wanted to do this exhibit then, mm -hmm. but I think it was just the wrong timing or things were not in place. So unbeknownst to me, what was happening in the background, as you saw the, the B-roll, uh, Professor Gandhi was here in Guam doing research about um, what's being shown in the exhibit. Mm -hmm. um, and so that that's how the exhibit came about. Uh, Miss Saigon is, is a popular show. It's been done all over the world except for Vietnam. Uh, oh, really? I never knew that. As, as, as of now, it had not been because of the, the government that's there. I mean, the show is pretty... Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, we're, we're going to talk about the play in, yeah. in just a minute. We've got the, uh, the video up again, uh, Max. Look right. at some just the pieces. Yes. And there is, uh, you know, the aforementioned Dr. Gandhi, you know, who has right. really, really taken a lot of steps with her and her mother, also a doctor, right. um, really yes. putting this beautiful exhibit together. Right. So, and, and just t tying it back to 2016, we really, I really wanted to do this with the Vietnamese community and the veterans. And so the pandemic gave us an opportunity that we didn't need to be together. And we did all of this over nine months, a coordination through Zoom. Mm -hmm. So it was an international help from uh, Professor Gandhi being in California. We had another scholar that was in Virginia. Um, uh, and we just, we just did this and put it together. Mm -hmm. um, so I got here a few weeks ago to help assemble the exhibit and burning my military leave so that's what I've been doing <laughs> and I'm volunteering there as a tour guide so if you come on the days you may catch me if not me you'll meet a veteran uh, or two who are also part of the exhibit mm -hmm. so and, the tie is most people are unaware that Guam played a very very big role during and after the Vietnam War mm -hmm. And so I don't want to spoil people uh, uh, giving you everything, but I, I just want to invite the public. This, this is, uh, I'm an educator, and this is stuff that w wasn't covered when we were in high school. Right. In depth. And, and I, Many I, people are just learning about Operation New Life and, and, the, and right. the historical significance of that event and, right. and the fact that Guam housed Vietnamese refugees. They're le right. just learning that now through this exhibit. Right. So this exhibit is all Guam-based. The, 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 there was a 20-year-plus war. Um, and, and so we, we, Dr. Gandhi and I, we were trying to figure out how do, we, how do we slim this down to a nice focus. And that was the focus, Guam's perspective of the war. Mm -hmm. And so you'll walk through... And you'll see stories of uh, 
Chamorro Gomenian service members who um, finally had enough guts to talk about their experiences because there's a lot that, that don't want to talk about their experiences. Mm -hmm. It was pretty horrible for them. And the same for the Vietnamese refugees. A lot of them, uh, there were 3,000 initially that stayed here in Guam thanks to the help of uh, the churches to help sponsor them. But many have moved on and created lives elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And so we don't really have a count of how many Vietnamese refugees from from that original group in 1975 are still here in Guam. And it's okay. They they needed to leave that country, um, their their homeland, uh, for that reason. And for, for a lot of them, they want to just leave it behind. Mm -hmm. Well, so, I appreciate the fact, yeah. Max, that you brought up, like, you know, um, a lot of the, the deep-seated memories are, are still very, very difficult. Oh, it's me. very visceral. Yeah, exactly. So, I had, so even if you're not, not directly you know, connected to, um, you know, to the culture of Vietnam or, you know, like you weren't around during that time locally, w as you make your way through the exhibit and everything like, what is the emotional impact that it has on anybody? Well, if you, if for I've, many times that I've been as a tour guide, we get to a, a granite wall, um, which is a replica of the Vietnam war, uh, Vietnam war wall that's in Washington, DC, mm -hmm. but the wall huh. just with the Guam and CNMI names. And when people pass it and they see a, a loved one or a family member who's on that wall, we, we've had some people leave in tears mm -hmm. because uh, for, for a lot of them, especially the Vietnamese refugees and the veterans, they just want the public to know what they went through. They're not asking for any sympathy or anything. They just want, um, and this exhibit will help you have a basic understanding of what went on uh, 47 years ago. Absolutely. So very, very critical part of Guam history. And we want to invite you, everybody. Um, it, it is open right now, Tuesdays through Sundays, starting at high noon through 6 p.m. over at the Two Monsans Plaza. It runs through September 15th. Well, Max, while we have you here, we are yeah. talking about, yes, Miss mm -hmm. Saigon, we know you are, you are a man of, of performing arts. And, <laughs> and you said, you know, that was your passion. I've known you ever since high yes. school. You always grew up in music. Uh, you've now made music a part of your military service. Um, yep. As an educator, you've done that. This is one of the most timeless plays. Yes. And it plays in perfectly to, you know, to the exhibit. I, I gotta say, I remember discovering Miss Saigon because of course I'm a big fan for Lea Salonga uh -huh. when she performed in it. Mm -hmm. The music is incredible. Yes, the music as is As is the message. Yes, it is. So Miss Saigon for me, I have to give credit to the Guam Territorial Band. The Guam Territorial Band, we, Mr. Hardy was the director at the time, 1998. We were invited to represent Guam in the United Kingdom uh, for a Lions convention. And so we, the band placed second place. Um, and um, we had a night off. And uh, they said, oh, hey, let's go down the West End and let's go, let's go see a show. I was like, okay, I don't know. I, this is my first time seeing a, a musical that I wasn't a part of. Here, here in Guam, I've been part of musicals since 1992, thanks mm -hmm. to the great Benji Diola and sure. others. That, it's kind of weird being on the yeah. other side of the stage, right. isn't it? Right, <laughs> it was just, and, and so, you know, I, I had no clue about Vietnam War. I had an ROTC instructor who, who served in the war, but he hardly talked about it. I, I, I had a history teacher who served in the war too, and they, they hardly talked about it. But this musical has been in the back of my mind since 1998. So. Uh, that's my first Im impression of it. And it wasn't until uh, Marjorie Dancel said in uh, 2015, hey, let's do Miss Saigon in Guam. I've got the license. It's like, heck yes. <laughs> <laughs> that so, is the most difficult one, well, actually, yes. no. That, that is not the most difficult part. That's probably the most legal part, but certainly yes. putting the play together and casting and really yes. connecting with the story and the music. Yeah, we, we partnered with Gate. We partnered with... Um, a lot of uh, the local Magis is a, is a choir of Ateneo alums that live here in Guam, Ateneo from the Philippines. Sure. And uh, they usually are, they stick their head out during the June time frame for Philippine independence, but they're, they're around. And, and we, we, we pretty much showcased Guam's talent in tw 2016. Mm -hmm. so, now as someone who's yeah. been involved with like, with as many plays as you have and, and you know, done so much stagecraft, what makes Miss Saigon such a challenging production? Well, it has to do with uh, a lot of the misconception of, of the, the work. So uh, it is rated PG-13, so there are some material at, 
uh, that some parents may be reluctant to send their kids to. But I'll tell you, the show itself, being we're doing the original Malaya Salonga version from mm. 1993, is a lot more tame than the revival that was yeah. that was uh, recently released in 2014 and 2017. So if for the parents that are, are watching, you rest assured, you're, they're not going to see anything worse than probably what they already see on their phones it probably will be a lot more tame than most people would think mm -hmm. so so from that that that's the one of the hardest things that we needed to discuss i remember someone saying in 2016 there was a protest out at the lobby of the of southern high school because they they just weren't um, probably they were not very familiar with the show and what it, what its message is and thematically, I mean, there are there are some things in there that you know, like um, maybe yeah. some some parents might not, you yeah. Know, yeah, necessarily prefer their kids like learn. But but there are some life lessons there that that are timeless Absolutely. and that are universal to each of us, you know, regardless of where you come from. If you would bring your child to Romeo and Juliet or or anything of that sort, the Hamlet's pretty heavy if you think about it. Um, th I think it's heavier. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Henry so. V is brutal. <laughs> yes. So this would this show would be the a Muppets lot. take Manhattan. I cry every single time I watch Miss Piggy and Kermit <laughs> get married. That's no joke. Hmm. So this show would be a lot more tame compared to that. But what what we do in the show because it is filled with some inconsistencies. That's the reason why ah. I was so passionate about doing the exhibit. Mm -hmm. Just out of respect for the veterans, we we have a high number of veterans here, and then the ver Vietnamese community. We, we are the we. As Guamanians, many of them in 1975 opened their doors to 112,000 refugees that right. processed through here. So we are we are a big part of the Miss Saigon story, but we're not mentioned at all in the show. Mm -hmm. And of course, we can't change the show uh, for licensing reasons. So and, so it, and maybe that's that's the key point is you know under your tutelage uh, and just being involved, you're going to do this as as any self-respecting. Guamanian Absolutely. wood, you're going to do this accurately, you're going to do it true to the, the music, best true to can. the story, yes. but with also a deep sense of cultural respect. Yes. Yeah. And so I, I'm privileged to announce, because I picked him up at the airport, our, our, one of our headliners is Ethan Le Fong, who happens to be the first Vietnamese uh, descent uh, actor to be part of the Miss Saigon franchise, and he's going to be part of our show. So that is amazing how the, how the play is as old as it is, and only recently. That is the key. Yeah, only recently, and I can't remember if it was the twenty fourteen. Hopefully, the first of many, or the twenty seventeen. Yeah. Well, th yeah, th there's many that followed after him, okay. but he he really broke the ice, and and I'm we're so privileged to have him be part of the show alongside the rest of the headliners we've got. We've got. Okay. And I got to tell you again, yeah. the Lea Salonga's version of I Still Believe. Guys, go look it up on YouTube. Is the, the Look it up. The harmony when the two ladies break into like yes. that one part and they do the duet. I mean, I don't care who you are. If that doesn't give you chicken skin, you know, yeah. you better check your pulse. So Right. And that's what we, we want to give the, the audience here. It, it costs money to go to Broadway, um, but we can provide it to you right here for as little as $25. Or if you want a, a premium seat uh, up to, a, what was it, 100 175 dollars like 150 dollars yeah. and i can so, vouch for this if this is a max ronquillo production and everything it is yeah. going to be top-notch stuff because the man right here yeah. never fails to let us down yeah well we we all are it's a huge team maybe we have 200 including the cast the crew the orchestra the pit chorus there's going to be about 200 of us working behind the scenes to make this uh, mm. masterpiece come to life for for the people of guam okay. we have five shows we want we want everybody to come out um I, I have been a big uh, community uh, volunteer for music for many, many years, as you know. Sure. Especially with the Guam Territorial Bay. I don't get paid for that. That's mm. a volunteer job. I've well, done. okay, real quick. I got about 30 seconds left. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the, uh, about the band and uh, what's going on with the band. Sure. Right now. Yeah, so um, the band's always looking for members. So if you're interested, please go to, please email gtband at gmail.com reach out to Jessica Pangolin and we need we need a lot of uh, y even young folks to to join the band There's, you're never too young or old to join that band the band is the the blood and soul of Guam's music and yep. I'd like to support it uh, and I, I'd like the public to support it as well I can say in my time here at KUM I've literally seen like maybe like two entire generations of musicians come through the program yeah 
each and every one said it was like you know one of their life's greatest honors to be able to Serve join them. other talented musicians yeah. to be able to perform to be able to represent guam and to just you know yeah. do what do what they love with other people who feel exactly as they do yes so. can i do one last plug please yeah. uh, the the organization putting together miss saigon and the exhibit is the guam philharmonic foundation which i'm one of the co-founders and we we have started the tumon bay youth orchestra in 2018 i mm -hmm. think you interviewed uh, uh, them a few months ago and so by the end of the month uh, I'd like to invite anyone who with at least three years playing experience age 25 or younger to be part of the orchestra for all of this information whether it be Miss Saigon the exhibit or Tumon Bay Youth Orchestra you can go to guamphilharmonic.org for all the information all right. and we'd love to have you join the orchestra all right Max you are truly a man of stage a man of music um, a man of service and everything and we greatly appreciate all of it thank you're you, also jason. you're also a really nice guy so <laughs> thank you jason all right thank you and thank you to the people of guam for your continued support over the years all right we're back right after this. the kuam care force along with partners guam